America too long. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavalla Bhagiri Vardhari Gopi Janavalla Bhagiri Vardhari Yasura Nandana Braja Janaranjano Jasura Nandana Braja Janaranjano Jamuna Tira Vannachari Jamuna Tira Vannachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Valla Bhagiri Vardhari Gopi Janna Valla Bhagiri Vardhari Gopi Janna Valla Nandana Braja Janaranjan Jasura Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Nachari Jamuna Tira Nachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari <coughs> Jaya Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahamsa Bari Vraj Gajaja Shudra Shri Shri Mad His Divine Grace Abhay Jaranar Avinda Bhakti Vedanta Sami Shirvu Bhad Ki Jai Jaya Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahamsa Bari Vraj Gajaja Shudra Shri Shri Mad His Divine Grace Shira Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Gosa Maharaj Pro Bhad Ki Jai Ananta Gudi Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Iskand Vanda Charya BBT Vanda Charya Shri Bhad Ki Jai Nama Charya Shri Hari Das Thakur Ki Jai Brahm Shri Gaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Shri Dvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Grantara Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Sam Veda Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Gaura Premanandi All Glories to the Sambal Devotees 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 Sri Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga Okay.
So if the Vedic culture was so advanced, why didn't they have laptops? <laughs> laptops. So this morning, reading from the seventh canto, fifth chapter, this is text number six. <clears throat> Narada Muni is speaking. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Jai. So. Shri Narada Vacha Shutva Putra Giro Daicha Parapaksha Samahitaha Jahasa Budir Balanam Vidyate Para Buddhi Bihi Shri Narada Vacha Shutva putra giro daitya Parapaksha samahita Jahasa budhir balanam Vidyate parabudhi bihi Shri Narada vacha Shutva putra giro daitya Parabaksha samahita Jahasa budhir balanam Vidyate parabudhi bihi Shri Narada vacha Shudva putra giro daitya Parabaksha samahita Jahasa budhir balanam Vinjade parabudhi bihi Vidyate Parabudhi Bihi. Anyone else present or? I'm all the priest. Sri Narada Vacha. Sri Narada Vacha. Srinada Vacha Sutra Putra Giro Daitya Parapaksha Samhita 
Jasa Buddha Balanam Chad Vidite Para Buddha Bahi Synonym, Sri Narada Vacha, Narada Muni said, Shutva, hearing, Putra Gira, the instructive words of his son, Daicha, Hiranyakashipu, Parapaksha, on the side of the enemy, Samahita, full of faith, Jahasa, laughed, buddhi, the intelligence, balanam, of small boys, vidyate, is polluted, para buddhi bihi, by instruction from the enemy's camp. Translation, Narada Muni continued, when Pallad Maharaj spoke about the path of self-realization and devotional service, thus being faithful to the camp of his father's enemies, Hiranyakashipu, the king of the demons, heard Pallad's words, and he laughingly said, "This is the intelligence of, thus is the intelligence of children spoiled by the words of the enemy." Purport: Hiranyakashipu, being a demon, would always consider Lord Vishnu and his devotees to be his enemies. Therefore, the word parapaksha on the side of the enemy is used here. Hiranyakashipu never agreed with the words of Vishnu or Krishna. Rather, he was angered by the intelligence of a Vaishnav. Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna says, Sarvam dharmam prichajya mami kam sharanam braja. 18th chapter, 66th verse. Give up all other duties and surrender unto me. But demons like Hiranyakashipu never agree to do this. Therefore, Krishna says, Namam duskutinam mudha prabhajyante naradamaha maya pritagyana asuram bhava masritaha. Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. Gita 7, chapter 15, verse. The asura bhava, the atheistic nature, is directly represented by Hiranyakashipu. Such persons being mudha and naradama, fools and rascals, the lowest of men, of men uh, would never accept Vishnu as the supreme and surrender to him. Hiranyakashipu naturally became increasingly angry that his son Prahlad was being influenced by the camp of the enemies. He therefore asked that saintly persons like Narada not be allowed within the residential quarters of his son. For otherwise, Prahlad would be further spoiled by Vaishnava instructions. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gyanandana Salakaya Chakshurun Minitam Dinataisma Isiri Gurave Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadadhar Shivasari Gaur Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Banchaka Badru Bashakri Bashindu Bevacha Patidanam Bhavani Bhu Vaishnavi Bhu Namo Namaha By your good wishes, ardent prayers, I'll try to say a few words. Dr. Saul, could you open that door just uh, enough to keep us awake? Is that enough to keep you awake? Or do you want to open it all the way? Okay. Narada Muni continued, When Pallad Maharaj spoke about the path of self-realization and devotional service, thus being faithful to the camp of his father's enemies, Hiranyakashipu, the king of the demons, heard Pallad's words, and he laughingly said, Thus is the intelligence of children spoiled by the words of the enemy. So we're seeing here that uh, initially Hiranyakashipu didn't take it very seriously. Uh, Jahasa, he laughed. Sometimes they say you laugh something off, you laugh it off. So isn't that cute, right? 
Children sometimes say the darndest things. Remember that show with Art Linkletter? Kids say the darndest things. So remember that? I think they had some later versions, but back in the 60s and 70s when I was growing up, it was Art Linkletter. They had a show and they had little children on it. And for diff different ways, they asked me different questions. And they said the darndest things, cutest things, you know, and sometimes embarrassing to their parents. They're just very entertaining, but they're little kids, right? So this uh, buddhi bhalanam, this the intelligence of little children. They say the darndest things, the cutest things. So, you know, he asked his son, and his son gave him the straight sadanta, but he was taking it as buddhi bhalanam. Cute words of a kid. And he laughed about it. A little concerned that how in the world did my son he hear this kind of information from uh, Parapaksha, uh, the enemy's camp. And this is where it starts becoming very... It's not jahasa. It's not a laughing matter. Because he's enemy. When you say someone... Do you have any enemies? You have enemies? Okay. Sure? You said yes first. Okay. <laughs> But if you think about it, some people have enemies. A lot of people have enemies to the point where if they saw them, they would kill them or, or at least hurt them within their mind, with their words, or physically. And just the thought of them makes their blood boil. You ever that expression? Makes your blood boil, just hearing them. So that's the nature of this material world. And later on, Pallad Maharaj is explaining that, uh, you know, these kinds of, he didn't like school because he's telling my teachers, they want to tell us, these are my friends, these are my enemies. He says, as far as I'm concerned, everyone's a devotee of Krishna. I can't relate to this, uh, these instructions that I'm supposed to see you as an enemy and I'm supposed to see you as a friend, etc. all these different things. It just doesn't register for a Vaishnava, but for a materialist, it's a very, very, very important thing. I just saw a little, little blurb on the internet because it was, you know, you know, it comes up, pops up, and you, it was about how they're criticizing our, 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 our present president for not being more aggressive in the international arena, and now China, and of course you have Russia. That whole thing's going on in the Middle East. These are our enemies. And now they're becoming emboldened, you know, to do all kinds of horrible things around the world, which ultimately will affect us. So immediately this, there are enemies, and they're doing horrible things, and we should just go in there and smash them like that. We need a president like that. So that was the, that was the gist of the, the little article. So this discrim discriminating who's an enemy and who's a friend, uh, that's, that's going on. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj doesn't have that uh, consciousness, but Hiranyakashipu does, because he is, as described here, um, Daicha, or uh, uh, as Prabhupada brings up this very important verse in the Bhagavad Gita. The verse isn't an important, but it's a pivotal verse, struck very instructive verse. In the seventh chapter, he explains there's four kinds of people that never surrender to me, and there's four kinds of people who do surrender to me. So it's, there's an analysis there is given. This namam discretina, they're called discretinas, which is a compliment on one hand that they're very meritorious, but they're going in the wrong direction. Like that. And the first is the mudha. You ever been called a mudha? Have you? Yeah. Happens. Like that. It means fool. You fool, what are you doing? <laughs> Have you been called a mudha? He's married. Any married man's been called a mudha, right? You've been called a mudha, more or less? Okay. You get it from your wife, you get your spouse, your kids. Mudha means a fool. Now, now I'm not going to open this up because we don't have much time. You can open this verse up and read the purport, and Prabhupada elaborates what is a mudha, very, very base uh, Intellig not much intelligence, just very much just working very, very hard for the creature comforts of life. And there's not much more to life than that. No real interest in anything spiritual. Mudha, a fool. Uh, the uh, prime example of the mudha is the donkey, right. He's working very, very hard, carrying the washerman's load, 
and doesn't realize on each side of the road there's so much grass, but he's working so hard and he just he gets a little grass at the end of the day. Oh, this is wonderful, this is wonderful, like that. Like that. And sometimes he speaks philosophy, but no one appreciates. Can anyone imitate a donkey? Can anyone imitate a donkey? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that, that's the noise. It's very the very if you ever hear if you ever hear one, it is irritating. It's an irritating sound, it's not pleasing at all. Right? So that's their speaking. And then Prabhupada says they go for sex and they simply get kicked in the face by the female donkey. So that's a mudha. That's the example given. Then you have your naradama, which is a, uh, you could say, more uh, advanced culture. Human beings, you know, they have a culture and this and that, but it's all godless. And they're very, very proud of all of their achievements and so on, but they're completely godless and very, very proud of their godlessness. Maya pritagyana, which means jnana means knowledge. Knowledge is stolen by maya or illusion. And that's your philosophers and theologians and so on who really don't know anything about the absolute truth. They're concocting and speculating and they're personalist and, and so on. And then the asura are the out and out asuras. They're just out and out, you could say, demoniac demons, very uh, anti-god very cruel, and so on. So these four kinds of people don't surrender to Krishna. Then Krishna explains, there are four who do. There are four who do surrender unto him. But as far as this asura bhav, atheistic nature, in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, this is brought up. In fact, I'm going to grab it right here. I have a little bit of time. Maybe just... You know, the 16th chapter of the Gita is about the divine and demoniac natures. Krishna wants us to understand you know, where we stand. In the very beginning of the chapter, it's uh, enlivening, an enlivening verse because Krishna's telling Arjun, let me see here. He lists all these wonderful qualities. Should I read them? Okay, so I'll read the English. It says, Krishna's saying, Fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity, simplicity, nonviolence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault-finding, compassion for all living entities, freedom from covet covetousness, gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities of son of Bharata belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. But this chapter is called the divine and divine. This is the only thing Krishna says about the divine. The rest of the chapter is about the other, uh, the demoniac qualities. And uh, let's see if I want to read any of the rest. Well, let's just read, just read one here. Now, this is the antithesis. This is the demoniac. Pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, and ignorance. These qualities belong to those of demoniac nature, O son of Prita. Uh, the divine natures are conducive to liberation, and the other ones... They make for bondage in this material world. And then our, our Krishna tells Arjun, our, don't worry, Arjun. Uh, Daivi Sampat, you're born with the divine qualities. You don't have these demoniac ones. Don't worry about it. And then he goes into whole elaboration of all many, many different qualities of the demons. So you know exactly if you meet a demon or not, I guess. Like that. You'll meet them. It's just there. Uh, influenced by the lower modes of material nature these qualities come out. And I just wanted to read the last, there's a few last chapters here. Uh, what Krishna's saying is that the text 23, this yasha stividim utsrija vartate kamra karata nasa sidim avabnoti nasukam paramkatim. One who discards, discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. Uh, so... Let's talk a little bit about all these things. Okay. Anyways, I lost that. Uh, in the verse, uh, one word caught my attention, bidjate. Uh, Hiranikai Shibu said bidjate, spoiled. My son's been spoiled. I don't want him to be spoiled. Every parent wants their child to grow up to be just like them. 
pretty much, unless it's, you know, you're not doing well and you want to give your a child a, a better chance at life, but at least one's qualities and so on. One wants the child to grow up like them. So it's quite interesting here. He's considering that if one becomes a devotee, they're spoiled, right? And devotees thinking, if my son grows up to be a non-devotee, a, a materialist, he's spoiled. Like that. So it's uh, two different ideas about what it means to be a success or what it means to be spoiled in life. And uh, Hiranyakashipu is also quite astute to know that it's by association. Therefore, he put a ban on any devotee association, any devotees, even Narada Muni, coming anywhere near his son, because he's very much afraid by that divine association, he'll become really Krishna conscious. There's another example. Actually, Narada Muni knows in his own, his own life story, which he tells in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, his mother was a maidservant, and the Bhakti Varantas, the great souls, were there for one Chaturmasya four months of the rainy season, staying, and she was serving them. And he was a little boy, like Pallad Maharaj, and he was serving those devotees also, bringing them pasadam and maybe washing their clothes and just sitting and listening to them. And just by that association, he says, for that, for that one rainy season, his heart changed and he became the great devotee Narada Muni, and he went on with his spiritual life. So it's true, it happens, just by a little association. And of course, Narada Muni was the reason Pallad Maharaj was a devotee already, just by hearing his instructions from inside the womb. But this uh, association, and there's Sadhu Sangha, and there's Asat Sangha. You can associate with saintly persons, you can associate with those who aren't saintly, and whoever you associate with, you'll become just like them. Is it Hiranyakashipu who's quoted in the Nectar Devotion? He compares association to a, like a, a, a prism, a, a, a light, a prism. In other words, it simply reflects the light that goes to it. It just reflects the light. So we reflect the qualities of those who we associate with. Uh, I remember reading, a, it was in a book or an article once, that it says, you will become, you will become like the three people you associate the most with. Did you know that? And therefore, it's an article about wealthy people. They know that, and therefore they're very careful about wealthy, success, materially wealthy, successful people. They're very careful about who they associate with because you, you level off with about three or four people you associate with the most in your life. So we have to chum up to uh, and associate with uh, who we want to become like because you could become just like them. Just like them. It's quite, a, quite, it's, it's just a, um, what do you call it, a sociological fact. And therefore, there are different associations of people, whether it's financial and business or religious or um, academic. You know, all these different groups are there. Why do they form these? Because they know in that tight association, they'll develop each other's qualities. And you always want to, that's why it says you always want to associate with more advanced devotees because they'll pull you up. To pull you up like that. So to be very, very careful. And uh, uh, I'll end with this. Does anyone here feel threatened by Hiranyakashipu? Threatened by him? Yeah, yeah. Who's that? Well, uh, okay, 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 okay. If you see him, if you see him you'll know him. That, <laughs> that's the person we're reading about here, this uh, very demoniac king and father who's about ready to torture his son for being a devotee. So... Uh, Keep coming back. You're going to hear a lot about Harani Kashibu. I tell you, it's, getting, it's going to get real exciting. Uh, not just exciting, but, uh, you know, enlightening. Now, we don't feel threatened by Harani Kashibu per se, you know. Uh, but what to be threatened by or, or concerned about or worried about is a little Harani Kashibu inside of all of us, Right? That's what we have to watch out for. And this will be brought up throughout the discussion of this pastime. And I'm sure many times the verse from the fifth canto will be quoted. Prayer to Lord Nishingadev to destroy all of the <clears throat> demoniac uh, tendencies within our own hearts. So that is something, a theme that has to be uh, discussed over and over and over again. 
because that's the Harinikashipu who's going to make a mess of our, our life, the little Harinikashipu inside of us. We all have two sides. There's some, I don't know the reference to it, but it, there's, I've heard it said a few times that in such a yuga, you know, the demons were way, way, way over there, other planets or something like that, and all the sewers were here, and then gradually gets closer and closer and closer to the point where in Kali Yuga we have the, de the, the demon and the devotee in the same body. So in other words, we're going back and forth. We have those tendencies back and forth, and that's just a symptom of the age of Kali. So we have to, we have our lower self and we have our higher self, and Krishna says you control the lower self by the higher self. And I'm going to end the class by reading uh, a song by, the translations of a song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, where he takes the part of a materialist and uh, describes his life. In fact, the uh, song is called Amar Jivan, or My Life. It's from the Sharanagati. And just listen to these qualities. Uh, not that he has these qualities, but he's just saying that this is uh, the life of a materialist or the different tendencies within the heart of every conditioned soul until they are purified. So let me read this, Amar Jivan. My life is always engaged in sinful activities without a trace of pious activities. I am always inclined to give great anxiety and trouble to other living entities. I mean, and mentally you can keep a scorecard if you like, like a one through 10, how am I doing on these? For my personal sense of gratification, I never reject any kind of sinful activity. I am not at all merciful, and I see only my personal interest. Another, another uh, way to, uh, to analyze this as we're speaking is if we, in the past, before becoming a Krishna consciousness, how many of these qualities were prominent in our life, and now how much have they been reduced, like that, or are nil? When others are suffering, I become very happy. I'm always speaking lies, and if someone is suffering, that is very pleasant to me. I have lots of material desires within my heart, and I'm always angry and deceitful. I am captivated by subject matters of sense gratification, and I'm almost crazy. My ornaments, my ornaments are malice and false prestige. I am conquered by sleep and laziness, and I'm always averse to pious activities, but I am very enthusiastic to perform impious activities. I always cheat others for my prestige. I am conquered by greed, and I'm always lusty. I am so fallen, I have no association with devotees, and I'm always an offender. In my life, there is not a bit of auspicious activity, and my mind is always attracted to something mischievous. Therefore, at the fag end of my life, I have become almost invalid because of all of such sufferings. Now in my old age, with no alternative, I have by force become very humble and meek. Thus Bhaktivinod offers this sad statement of his life's activities at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. Yes, I was just reading that in uh, Jamuna's diary. Uh, she was uh, ma making, a, making this point that to Bhakti Vinod Thakur, that if you look at his life, be, uh, of course, being a Paramahamsa Vaishnava, but even materially, you know, magistrate, overseeing the Jagannath Temple, uh, in new diff many different languages, writing so many books, you know, and this, so many qualifications materially and spiritually, and how from his pen issued such great humility and just begging for, for Krishna's mercy is such an example for all of us. But, um, of course, the, the take-home or, or the theme of the class being that we have to watch out for the little Harani Kashipu in our heart. That will give us more trouble because it's until it's completely purified, the tendency is there because it's just the, um, what do you call it? Uh, I guess you call it a Papa Janma, sinful birth. We all, for the most part, had very sinful, we came in not the topmost families, right? 
<laughs> by Vedic, uh, by Vedic uh, categories, we all started out uh, the bottom of the totem pole, like that. And it's kind of, as you say, running in our blood. So you have to be very careful. In other words, the modes of nature are there. So that's the Harani Kashipu we have to watch out for. And don't let it uh, overrun um, the Prahlad in our heart. Like that. The Prahlad has to become very, very big, Harani Kashipu, like that, by the process of devotional service in Krishna consciousness. And of course, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, what's the lesson he's teaching? All of this is only possible when one becomes Trinada Pisuni Chena Torori Vasuhishnana Mani Damana Dena Kirtaniya Sadahari. Govardhan, what's the translation of that verse? Oh, best of the pundits. La- Excellent. So we can end here. Any questions or comments? Yes, please. Please, Babu. Just, uh, oh, thank you. Nice class. It's a little ironic that, that householders in our movement, they do the Gavadhan Sanskara 50 rounds before they you know, uh, try to procreate. And the children just come out to be, you know, quite, they come out to be nonsenses. And we're, like you mentioned, we're born in Malachia, Yavana families. Just, just you know, our parents are just like completely sinful. And we come out to be devotees. It's uh, kind of hard to understand. They all, they all become nonsenses. All of them? No, I, I, I didn't say all of them. I said well, 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 the thing many. is that, uh, you know, just like when they talk about different kinds of Vaishnavs, there's the family Vaishnav, the Kula Vaishnav. You're born into a Vaishnav family. You know, just what you got born into. So you may or may not take that seriously because it's a family you're born into. You come to the town. You see it. You can. You could say maybe you can adjust. You can say many of our Indian congregation are like that. It's their culture. They're born into it. They come on John Mastami and this and that. But then there is the Sampradaya Vaishnav, who's met a pure devotee and uh, been inspired from within the heart to be very, very serious about their Krishna consciousness. So just being born in a good family is not a guarantee that one will become a, a good devotee, just as being born, I mean, Prahlad was born in a really nice demoniac family. He had all facility to become a really good demon, but he blew it. He became spoiled, and he went completely opposite direction. So birth is, is there, culture is there, but it's not everything. So that's, that's the point. Is, and every, sooner or later, everyone has to make up their own mind if they're, how, how Krishna conscious they want to be. So being born in a devotee family gives you a good introduction and start, but sooner or later you've got to make up your mind. And of course, we sometimes see that. Devotees, they start growing up, and then all of a sudden they come around. It's like, whoa, they really appreciate what they had in their childhood and so on, and Guru Kula and so on, and, you know, it just takes some time. Can, can I add, add one thing on that point? Because I told the story before. This one Maharaj was talking about, a, had a student there in, in, in Mayapur, and, of course, a certain time of the year, was it the summer, there's a break? There's a break, and they, all the kids go home where they came from. And this one, he's a teenager, he went back to, he was from Europe, and he went back to Europe. And while he was there, he thought, hey, you know, I'm taking a break from Krishna consciousness. So he went to a bar. He went to a bar, and he's sitting there thinking, well, this is nice, nice. And he saw this attractive young woman. And he went up to her and said, hi, my name is, you know, so-and-so. And she said, hi, my name is Maya. <laughs> and he just looked and said, uh, I think he walked out or somebody. He's like, Christian's just, uh, my name is Maya. Like, okay, I, <laughs> I get it. My name is Maya. So, so you've got to make up your own mind. Um, following Vijay's uh, question and comment, um, I, think, I think that one of the things that we should also um, take into account is that we kind of blew it a little bit with the schools. I mean, the kid has a, has a great chance, you know. I mean, there, you know, you look at some of those pictures of probably visiting the Dallas school in the early days, and the wonderful kid dancing and everything. 
but still they they're kids you know and if this and if we blow this if we mess up the school and you know they have less than ideal things going on in the school i'm not going to get into detail then that's going to affect the kids also you know and that that's that's a that's a serious black mark it's it's a question of also culture and it's not it's with children and it's with our congregational members in other words there has to be a very tight and and, and progressive training of all our members how to be krishna conscious and if that's not there, just like Harani Kashipu was worried that devotees would sneak in, so Maya, Maya will sneak in. So we have tra training has to be there for children, for adults, for everyone. And that if that's all in place, you see that in a, it's a cultural thing in the circle of family and temple and village and society. If that's all in place, people have a pretty good chance of making it. But like you said, if that's not there then it's not so easy. It's a little bit more. But anyway, I, I was I was uh, distributing books one time. I was walking around in Balboa Park, and they have like some vendors there. And uh, this is unrelated to what we were just talking about. But um, so I was walking, and this family was walking by one of the vendors, and they're kind of like looking at the stuff. And then I guess they had a daughter or something, you know. And the lady goes, that has Maya written all over it. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I started laughing. I was there alone, just kind of laughing at it. Anything else? Uh, uh, Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes. I don't have anything. I don't have any readings. I'm sorry. Uh, may I? Yes, please, Prabhu. Question, comment. Uh, Dharma said, Prabhu, thank you very much. You're most kind and about pronouns. Prabhu, the, the poem by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, you, you just offered to the Sangha. If I may ask, where, where can it be found? Can, can you see this? <laughs> no, no. It's Songs of the Vaishnavacharyas. Yes, and what is the name of the song you recited? Amar, Amar Jivana. Or Amar Jivan, Amar Jivan. Prabhupada sings it. There's a purport in here. Amar Jivan. Yes, thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Vaishnavs. Yeah. Look. Shri Mahesh Pandit, the seventh of the twelve Gopals, they were associates of Nityananda right hand and left hand gopals. Uh, taste, uh, Sri Mahesh Pandit, seventh of the twelfth gopals, tasting Krishna Prema, used to dance like a madman to the sound of a huge kettle drum. This is a quote from somewhere. <laughs> Especially dear to Sri Nityananda Babu, he traveled and preached with the Lord. He established deities of Nitai Goranga, Radha, Radha Madan Mohan, Radha Govinda, and Gopinath. In Braj Lila, he uh, serves Krishna Balaram as the cowherd boy Mahabahu. His samadhi is in the 64 samadhis area. And one more, Udaranda Thakur, which I think is probably about the same length. I just one Okay, you can give a few a few little more notes, Ramapati, in one second. Just let me finish. Udaranda Thakur. Well, he's a little longer. Udaranda Thakur, a Dwarasha Gopal, another Gopal. Ah, they both the same day disappeared. It's interesting. Uh, lived in Saptagram, a cluster of seven villages. He names the villages. Uh, raised in luxury within a family of gold merchants. Hmm. He later married and worked as a wealthy state minister. The place where he once held office is today called Udaranapur in his honor. Lord Nityananda would often stay in his home and accept food from his hand. Performing Prema Nam Sankirtan in Saptagram, Lord Nityananda delivered the entire community of bankers and gold merchants. Wow. Udarandat said that Saptagram is such a holy place that simply by seeing it, one is freed from all sins. When he was 26 years old, his wife suddenly died. He left everything to, associ to associate with Sri Nityananda Prabhu and preach the glories of Krishna's holy names. He personally installed and worshipped deities of Shatbuj Mahaprabhu, Sri Nityananda Prabhu, Gadadar Pandit. He serves Lord Balaram as Subahu Saka in Brajlila, his samadhis in 64 samadhis area. 
Uh, after glorifying Udaranda Thakur as an exalted devotee of Lord Nityananda who worshipped him in all ways, Krishna Das Kaviraj praises all of Sri Nityananda Prabhu's devotees. No one can count the unlimited followers of Nityananda Prabhu. I have mentioned some of them simply for my own purification. As branches of Lord Nityananda's tree, these eternal associates are full of the ripe fruits of Krishna Prem. They gave, uh, they gave these fruits to everyone, flooding them with pure love of God. These devotees have unlimited strength to give eternal, unalloyed love of Krishna. They can offer anyone Krishna prema. And one thing just to remind us that when their days come and you read about them and pray to them, you get their mercy. So it's important to remember them and glorify them. There's just a short paragraph in this uh, CC Adi 1141 where uh, it's talking about the... Um, different associates of uh, Nityananda Prabhu. There's a uh, paragraph in this purport when it describes Udarna Dutta Thakur and Prabhupada says, um, I'll just, it's a short paragraph. He says, Calcutta was developed under British rule by the influential mercantile community and especially by the Suvarna Varnak community who came down from Saptagram to establish their business and homes all over Calcutta. They were known as the Saptagrami mercantile community of Calcutta and most of them belonged to the Mullik and Sil families. More than half of Calcutta belonged to this community, as did Srila Udarna Dutta Thakur. Our paternal family also came from this district and belonged to the same community. The Mullikhs of Calcutta are divided into two families, namely the Sil family and the Day family. All of the Mullikhs of the Day family originally belonged to the same family and Go sorry, originally belonged to the same family and Gotra. We also formally belong to the branch of the Day family whose members intimately connected with the Muslim rulers, received the title Malik. And there's another place where Prabhupada describes how, maybe it's in the same chapter, but anyway, he describes how he used to go um, to, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, in Saptagram, there is still a temple with a six-armed deity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which was personally worshipped by Srila Udarna Dutta Thakur. On the right side of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a deity of Sri Nityananda Prabhu, and on the left side is Gadadhar Prabhu. There, is also, there are also a Radha Govinda Murti and a Shalagram Shila, and below the throne is a picture of Sri Udarna Dutta Thakur. In front of the temple there is now a big hall, and in front of the hall there is a Madhavi Lata plant. The temple, in is a, the temple is in a very shady, cool, and nicely situated location. When we returned from America in 1967, the executive committee members of this temple invited us to visit it, and thus we had the opportunity to visit this temple with some American students. Formerly in our childhood, we visited this temple with our parents because all the members of the Suvarnavana community enthusiastically take interest in this temple of Udarna Dutta Thakur. Connection. Nice. Yeah. Shima Bhagavatam ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai.